Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 368. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB, uh, KIB studio today with Love of My Life. Mary Lou. Hi, everybody. I want to thank you all for praying. Um, you know, we uh, told you that we weren't going to get a second baling of hay in the area because of the the drought, and there was enough water. God gave us a, enough rain that they were able to get another one. We were so happy. We were going around seeing them baling the hay this last week, and thank you for your prayers. And my goodness, God's hearing the prayers, and he's answering from heaven, isn't he? He is. You know, we... Um and you know, with some of the things that we're going to be talking about today, I saw one comment uh, on Rumble where someone was trying to correct us saying, you know, we're in a period that God's not moving, God's not speaking, God's not doing a thing, he's not going to do a thing. And and I'm thinking, where in the world are you living at? Because he's, he's literally moving around the world. We're hearing from people around the world uh, that God is doing things. We're seeing people set free. We're seeing God do exactly what we've asked. We, we, have, we, have, we have asked him to let everything hidden be revealed. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what, if, if it didn't, uh, you know, the old saying, you know, it's, it's a plane that Ray Charles can see it, you know, yeah. that, uh, that what's really going on and the depth of the corruption, uh, is, is obvious to all, unless you're so involved in it that you can't see it. Yeah. But I think true. the average American is going, Oh my word, what in the world is going on? I do think that because I think everything's shaken that can be shaken. The Bible tells us that's going to happen. And um, I just want to read some verses real quick that are going to uh, tie in with what we're talking about. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And in yeah. Romans eleven thirty three thirty four, if we read there, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. And, you That's know, what, right. what, one of the interesting things is when it talks about with what Jesus did in, in the book of Acts, it said he did it according to his full counsel. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to understand that unless the Holy Spirit reveals something to you, you can't figure God out. God moves in such ways, Mary, that Lucifer can't figure it out. Yeah, that's right. You know, he he did not see the resurrection coming. He did not see. He it, It's like, okay, he knew there was this man child supposed to come that was supposed to do something to him. But little did he understand that it would be Almighty God come in the flesh. Little did he think that it was God giving his life on the cross to set everybody free from what he had done. Well, he would have no understanding whatsoever about sacrificing yourself Mm-mm. or someone else. That's the counter of his whole existence he wants everybody to sacrifice for him for him that's exactly right and so when when god begins to move and do things he does it in such a way that you know it's, it's like i have said for years the enemy is playing checkers while god is playing you know uh, three-dimensional chess and so if if that's true with the enemy how are we going to understand unless the Spirit of God reveals it to us. That, that's why we have to have faith. We, there's, there's a knowing there are covenant promises for us to stand on, Mary. Well, that's it. First Corinthians 2.11 says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. You know, we, we can't even comprehend how God's going to do things because we'll have our mind you know, in one direction, we'll think, well, of course, this is the way God would do this. No, not necessarily, and not usually. <laughs> you know how we would think something's going to be done. Um, I know I, I spent years wondering what the delay was for God to take care of this evil. I, I was trying to understand, God, I'm I'm doing everything you told me to do. I'm praying the prayers. You know, why, why is this such a delay? And as time went on, I could totally see why the delay was there is there were so many people um, tangled in the evil that had be either been coerced or, or mind control victims or whatever that would have went with the judgment. He was untangling them, and that, and that is not an easy thing. Um, you know, I had 
a lot of insight just based on the people that came to our ministry that were sent in um, on assignment. And I watched a lot, and I I saw things that probably most people should never see um, just by the, the craziness of everything that was going on. And But I did, I learned so much. You know, I can't look back and say I, I uh, would do it differently simply because I learned things that I would have never had any comprehension of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it's not hard for me to see uh, what Satan has done with the the gay and lesbian community, to the transgender, and and how far it's gone to where they're they're having surgeries on on uh, minor children and all the horrors of this. Because I saw what they had done with the mind control victims. And it just was all falling into place because things I'd seen my whole life in that town I was raised in that I just thought, well, that's odd or, you know, some quirky thing. It all fit in with the pattern of what I saw because they were they were doing mind control experiments to see if they could make males into females. Could they make a female into a male? I mean, it goes even all the way back to that Delgado implant. Mm-hmm. To where he was able to uh, cause gender confusion with a flip of a switch, mm-hmm. and so so I saw it, and it was actually hard for me to believe right in front of my eyes. It really was. It was that astounding uh, what I was seeing, and you know I'd ask God um, to show me things I could see with my eyes, hear with my ears, because anything that would have come up in a memory or anything like that, I wouldn't have put a lot of stock in. You know, I, I'm just one of those grounded people. I, I need to see something that's tangible. I need to see something that's that's real. Um, and especially with something like this to where, you know, how would you know a memory's real? Uh, honestly, how how would you know? Um, some especially people since say, they can well, implant them. and I've had what's called an ape reaction where you relive it. I know that. I know the uh, the dynamics of that. I know how horrible it is, but I also have seen their uh, ability to put things in people's minds. So why couldn't they put a false memory? And I am not in support of the false memory memory syndrome, um, that the, there's that foundation that tries to discredit anybody that says that something's happened to him, because I, th- I think that's um, something straight out of the enemy's camp. But I'm just saying we have to be careful with that stuff because you it would be very easy yeah. to have a wrong thing implanted. That's that's why I've never went around naming abusers, um, none of that, because I'd, I wouldn't even know if they were a victim and wouldn't even remember what they did. That's how intricate this mess is. Or if they superimposed that person over the true memory to hide or mask who really did it. They, they have spent decades perfecting this stuff and I, I can't even imagine what it'd be like with the younger generations with the type of video games they've seen the what they've learned from technology and frequencies I can't even imagine how difficult that would be but I I saw the horrors of what they did firsthand by making people into something outside of God's design and even though the I mean the the push within them, uh, is unbelievable to like be another sex and, and things like that. But but everyone I've ever met's miserable. Mm-hmm. They're miserable. And nobody, that's why sin destroys you. You're never going to have a productive life. You're never going to have happiness and joy if you are outside of God's original design. And so look at what they've done with this. And they, I think we need to even stop right there. The only way to get to God's original design is through the completed work of, of the cross right. and for, and for the, the grace of God. Because going all the way back to Adam, the original impression of God, how God made us, was marred from Adam mm-hmm. on. Every one of us, the image of God has been marred. It's only restored through the through the completed work of Christ. That's right. Therefore, before we get saved, we cannot say this is the way that God made me because it's not. It's the way that Lucifer made you. It's yeah. the way that sin made you. It's the way that that the, the work of the enemy has made you, and the whole purpose of the cross was to undo that. That's why you got to become a new creature. Mm-hmm. That's that's why you need to be born again. And that, that needs to be understood, and that, that's almost been a, a lost message in the body of Christ. There needs to be this transformation. There's need, there needs to be this metamorphosis that happens through the completed work of Christ. If we do not experience that, 
We're still operating out of the wounds and the mars that the, the enemy had made in the clay. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. And it's, you know, I, I've seen so much of what the enemy had done. It wasn't, it was kind of shocking how quickly the thing with the LGBT community progressed. It was very fast. It was like it had been working at a slow pace behind the scenes, and then it was just like an explosion of it. But I think it was it was planned. And I think now, think think about this, guys. Think about the little children that are going to go through some of these surgeries. And I don't I don't think it could be reversed. Most of it. Well, there's there's already because this has been going on longer in the UK than it has in the United States, and there's been botched surgeries, and uh, there's there is a uh, swelling uh, amount of these kids that are now growing up suing their own nation. For why did you promote this? This has absolutely ruined my life. It has ruined me physically. It has ruined me emotionally. It has ruined me in so many different ways. And I think we're going to begin seeing that here in the United States too. Yeah. Well, there's there was I saw the compulsion that was placed in people for all these different things. Um, even even this that I've never understood because it's so opposite of of the way my makeup is. People would want, um, need attention, crave attention so bad that they would, they would want it even if it made them look crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it just blows my mind. And these, I'm telling you, these are things that were started when they were kids. And, uh, it, it was so heartbreaking to me that I, I'm sure I made lots of mistakes along the way trying to undo what, what the enemy had done because I thought, these are such crushed lives. You know, when you go through things like that, Mike, the hope of having a normal relationship with all that going on in your head is next to nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's destroying lives. Not not to even go into, like, what they were programmed to do, the horrors of that, but just in your everyday life that, that they leave this, you know, storefront part of you to operate in everyday society you're going to be one of the most miserable people walking. And it, it was so heartbreaking to see that. And I, I did see God, even in me stumbling around and trying to help people, I did see God uh, make changes that helped. Uh, but it was it was unbelievable what these mind benders had done. And so you, you've got to look at the whole the whole situation, and there's only one hope for a great turnaround, and that's Almighty God. Oh, absolutely. There's no group of counselors. There's no group of doctors anywhere that could come close to turning this around except God. You know, one of the things that I I have seen, too, and this goes whether you have had this done to you or you're just a regular messed up person, that counseling can only go so far, that there's something about when the heart of you latches onto God and you begin walking with him. There are things that only God can do. There's healing that only God can do. There's, there's this whole, this whole concept of halicha of walking with God that when, as we're walking with him, he begins transforming us. He takes us from Abram to Abraham, Mm -hmm. a guy that was so scared of the Pharaoh that he lied about his own wife being his sister. Then he gets, after God has dealt with him and everything, and his family's taken captive by four kings, and some some researchers married with those four kings that took Sodom and Gomorrah. Some of them believe that they were of they were of Nephilim lineage. It wouldn't surprise so there, me. So there were giants in there and everything. And, and so, you know, Abraham goes from, I'm scared, to, we're going to round up some boys and we're going to go get our, from four armies, four kings, four armies. Well, don't you think that's the progression of his trust in God building? Absolutely. That's that's what I was wanting to talk about today is that, you know, right now it just looks like everything's over. And I, I can see why somebody thinks, hey, this is just the end. This is what Revelation talked about. Just sit back. It's going to happen. But God always has a plan for his people, for his remnant. And he's raising his remnant up all over the place. Yeah. And I don't see anywhere in the world in the word where it says, "Okay, if you perceive that prophecy is happening, you just sit back and just go on for the ride." And that's and that's the place we're at right now. We're at a place where we're going to either really be miserable and and just 
be in fear all the time, or we're going to trust the God whose ways are unsearchable. His ways are unsearchable, and his hand is unstoppable. That's it. And, and see, we can say this from experience because we lived through it. Yes. I mean, I, my, the back of my mind knew what I was coming against. And they just said, hey, we can't live like this, so we're going to go for it. And if we die, we die. And so you know what God did? He showed me over and over, hey, I'm, I'm plenty big enough to stop these people. I don't care if they send an army after you, Mary. I can stop them. Yeah. Because that's essentially what they have. They have an untold number of people that they control, unlimited resources. That's what I was tapping into when I, when I started this fight. But God was, was never, I mean, it was, I never heard an alarm out of heaven saying, oh, Mary, you're in trouble. It was just like, I got it. I got yeah. it. Just trust in me. You know, when, like when we have meetings, you know, it's trying to get the people to believe so they can receive. Uh-huh. And so it's like you have to have enough people with enough faith and in coming into agreement. But the God that we serve, when Jesus rose from the dead, nobody on planet Earth was in agreement with him. They thought yeah. it was all over. Yeah, they did. His, That's why the, you can imagine how those apostles were shaken. His, by his <laughs> eleven, his eleven apostles that you know Judas went and, and and killed himself, and so you have his eleven ones that he handpicked that he had trained. They all went back fishing and doing whatever you know, and they were in hiding. Mary, nobody believed. Hell thought that it had triumphed. Mm-hmm. There was nobody to stand in faith with him. And God says, when I'm getting ready to move, I don't need any faith in the earth. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do according to my own counsel because I'm in agreement with myself. Mm-hmm. And he rose from the dead to the chagrin of hell, death, and the grave. And then, you know, you even have Doubting Thomas, you know, is after the fact. He'd even, oh, I don't believe that's the God that we serve. He doesn't, he doesn't need our faith to do what he is going to sovereignly do. Now, he wants it. He wants us to believe so that we can be a part of it and that we can benefit from it. Yeah, be a part of it's big, too, because yes. he, he gave us authority so we would interact with his kingdom here on earth, mm-hmm. bring his kingdom to earth. And so he wants us in action. Yeah, I don't think there's ever a time, you know, maybe for a short period God may say, hold back and don't don't move just for this short period because I'm doing something but as a whole we are always in action always in that we're supposed to be we're, we're, we are to occupy until he comes and now, he's to, not he's not come yet no and so so I just want to encourage everybody to just just hang in there trust him and he can take care of you even in the midst of of all kinds of stuff going on because now when it says he's going to shake everything that be shaken um I, I believe we're going to have earthquakes. I think we just had one in Taiwan. Yeah. I saw a little news clip thing of um, he's. But at, in the midst of it all, you know, in the midst of you know our little family that nobody believed, you know, that there was such a an immediate response to when all this happened when the witch crawled in the van that they had everybody thinking, "Hey, Mary's just lost her mind." So we had nobody to stand with us. Not one pastor. Not one. All, all the great spiritual warriors ran for the hills. Well, I mean, they, they, I think it would have been easy for them to think I was crazy because who's going to believe the stuff I was going to say? Hey, a witch crawl in the van. She turned into something looked like a monster right in front of my eyes. And, you know, they're just they're going to have a hard time believing that, and I understand that. But the good news is, as much as I disliked all that we went through, I gained information that I could have never gained anywhere mm-hmm. else, seen things that I wouldn't have believed if somebody had told me that they'd seen. I would have had to seen it with my eyes. In everything that God is, was doing, he was, he was building my trust in him so that I could stand. And, I mean, I've been standing a lot of years saying these same prayers, coming against the kingdom of darkness every day, binding principalities, saying you're not going to do this. Our God reigns and claiming territory. I've been doing this for a long time, and there were, there were years it looked like there wasn't anything changing. But I had that hope because I knew the faithful God that took care of us, protected us from untold uh, dangers, was going to do fulfill what he said he's going to do, and I'm seeing him do it. And sustaining us, not only sustaining us, you know, when I, when I look at this and, and the walk that we walk, you know, what he walked us through and and what he did with us at the walk, if you had looked at us at the very beginning of this, it was like we were the least likely to succeed in ministry, in, in marriage, anything. in anything. Okay. <laughs> least likely anywhere. Anything. 
And yet, as we were walking with him, we were starting to throw off every every sin that so easily besets us. Yep. We're beginning to get the stones out of our pockets that the enemy had put there. God began to build spiritual muscle in a lot of areas, and he began to transform us. I know we, we have said a lot of times that the Mike and Mary that existed before that witch crawled in the van died. Yeah. They died along the way. And Mike and, Mary, <laughs> Mike and Mary 2.0 are so much better. Are we there yet? Oh, no, no. no. Uh, we still get in the flesh. Yep. I mean, of course, I, I think as long as you're, you're going to in the earth, you're going to have those days where, you know, it's like you just had enough and you, you have to get in the flesh and then you end up having to repent of it and, and get back under control. I mean, that's that's because we're human. But at the same time, God's working and God's grace covers and, and even in those situations, we can learn from it mm -hmm. because God's doing a thing. Well, we, I mean, we've had one agitating thing after another in the last few weeks, and I think it's because we're getting closer to the conference. I think that the, the kingdom of darkness is concerned about something. Um, and so it, even the other day we were going and picking up uh, some food items for the conference, and, and we were going to get gas. Well, the lines were so long, I was going to, Wave. Mike had the truck and I had uh, the other vehicle. And so I was trying to wave him up there so I could yell out the window, say, let's wait till we get home to get gas. So this woman comes zooming up through there. And I don't know if she thought I'd waved her on or whatever. But anyway, she cussed at me. the whole way And I thought I wasn't even anywhere near. Her. But I mean, it has been, it is so uh, agitating yes. out in the public right now. And we've got, um, we've got the, fall equinox coming up that's always a high time mm -hmm. when they have a lot of times when they have the fall um festivals there will be occult things meshed into that because they use the gatherings of the people and things so we need to be praying about that asking god to forgive sins of all occult activity to break the power and protect people especially on the roadways they like to cause a lot of wrecks during that time and take lives and they claim them as sacrifices so we're going to be praying about that but i mean just going out to get food uh, to prepare has been something else. You know, before I've always prayed peace over us, but I've had to pray peace over where we're going because people are so agitated. It is it just a a spark away from something bad happening. Yeah, and the ki little kids are just screeching. It's and you know, like kids will cry. There's there's a lot of kids just get mad at a store or something and cry. But these are these are pitches that there's something wrong. Yeah. You know, their child's being tormented or something, and you can tell a difference. So we're all going to have to be more alert. and uh, but, just, but just trusting, guys. I mean, if I could tell anybody anything, it's, it's trust him, and, and he'll prove himself that, he, that he's worthy of be trusted. He'll prove it. He did to me because, I mean, I lived my whole life never seeing anybody come out of the mess that I was in, survive if you tried to fight, any of that. And he just... He just built my faith, built my faith. And so, you know, it didn't take but a couple of years, and I, I was so full of faith that I just thought, you know, I had to watch myself. I didn't want to get cocky or arrogant and say, come on, you know, because that's what I wanted to <laughs> that's, sometimes. That's kind of your nature. It's like oh, I wanted to just say, come on, see if you can get through, Almighty God. But that's not the right attitude. I'm tired. It's time to rumble. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Let's get it over with. Um, but, you know, then a, a person – Okay, so you're working on, on your faith and trusting in God. So will you think, um, well, maybe God doesn't love me. You know, maybe there's something that, that God wouldn't help me. And then in Romans 8, 35 through 39, let me read this real quick. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God will never stop loving you. He will never stop pursuing you. Now, you can make decisions to take yourself out of protection. Yeah. That's the difference, and that's that's what makes people, I think, not trust, is that maybe they've been through a situation or they've seen circumstances, and they think, well, boy, if God loves us, then then he sure isn't helping us or something. But but you've got to understand, because we've not been taught kingdom. No, we've not. God operates in his kingdom. We bring his kingdom to earth as we do his commandments. 
the angels, he excel in strength to perform his word. So they're there. When you're in the kingdom and you're walking in his commandments and you're and you're pushing out the sin and you're choosing to follow the word of God, the angels are saying, we're here. We're, we're ready. You know, we're all, all we're doing is sitting here waiting for somebody to cross that boundary line. Get on your property. And we're, and we're there. Yeah. We're going to protect it. That's how the kingdom's supposed to operate. We've been deceived, and we've been told a bunch of lies, and so we think we can do anything we want to and go to church on Sunday. And, and see, observing the Sabbath is a big deal. It is. So the Catholic Church changing the, the day of the Sabbath was a big deal because they got you in, in whether you know it or not, you're still in sun worship. On Sunday. It's part of that Antichrist spirit that changed the times and the seasons. Now, has God used the Sunday church? Yes, he has. He's used what he's had, and there have been uh, miracles taking place, and he's used coming to the presence of those that love him and, and inhabits his praises. Yes, he's, he's used that. But what the downfall is, is it, it makes you vulnerable to attacks of the enemy because you're in a pagan situation and you don't even know it. Yeah. You know, and you can have, you can have church seven days a week. Yeah. But just don't call it the don't Sabbath. Don't call it the Sabbath. Don't say that's the Sabbath because that's a deception. It didn't get changed. No. It's Friday night to, to we, Saturday we night. We would have had an entire book written by the Apostle Paul to create a theological basis for the change of it because it, it is it is a, a creation principle. And and it's you no know, it, was, it was established in Torah. So that the, the, the you have to you have to grasp at straws to try to build a, the straw hut out of it. Who would have ever thought a sunrise service could be a breach in your armor? Yeah. But, but it's sun worship. Yeah. It's not got a thing to do with what God while has While it was has yet said. dark. Yeah, he rose while, you know, the they went there empty. and the tomb was empty. Yeah. And so these are the kind of things. Um, now, I don't think, I think that there will be covering on people that don't know this. You know, there's coverings there because they've been taught wrong. But He'll use anything. So you may have seen situations where there's several things going on to pull you, take you out of a kingdom protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that may have been what's happened, where you're thinking, well, I can't trust God. I, I was asking him for this. I was trusting him for this, and, and he didn't come through. It may be something you don't understand. Know this. Nothing can separate you from his love. He's never going to stop loving you. If, if you're saved and you backslide, he will never stop pursuing you. But you can put yourself in a vulnerable position, and that's a lot of what we've seen that has caused so many people to, to turn against God and not follow his ways. The other part is, is you've got who's not going to listen to their pastor. And the pastors have been taught this, like the preacher of rapture and all these things, that, that it really can't be backed up. Yeah. You know what's amazing? I've, I've got a book coming uh, written by a major uh, evangelical theologian. When, you know, I was raised in, in dispensationalism. And so you think that is the, the cornerstone of, of everything. But when you look at the full scope of evangelical theology, Darbyism is on the fringe. Mm -hmm. It's really on the fringe. We just had a lot of people vocal about it. But I think the closer that we're getting to it, I, I think fewer and fewer people are, are Darbyists anymore, that we're, we're beginning to wake up and realize that most of the early church fathers believed that the church was going through the tribulation period. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've said for years that I would rather be surprised by rapture than tribulation. Well, don't you think Darby was one of those used by the enemy yeah. to, to pull people out of the kingdom? You know, that's, that's what I see. Like, if I, if I just envision, envision the picture of what the enemy's doing all the time, is he is working overtime to try to convince you, step over here. Mm -hmm. Step, step over here. Get out of that protection. Step, step over the boundary of the kingdom and do this over here because, man, I can hit you there. You know, if, if you were commissioned in the word to hold fast to the truth until he comes, he who, he who is faithful to the end shall be saved. Okay. The, the pre-trib has really pushed historically that, you know, you're not going to have to go through anything. It cost the life of millions of Christians in China when the communists took over. It, uh, it decimated the faith of so many during World War II because they were taught, you know, if you get saved, you're not going to go through anything. Then you, then you have the Nazis coming through, and that totally blew that. So much so that Connie Ten Boom says, please quit teaching this this way. Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom, I'm sorry. And you, you have to look at the fruit of it. If it causes lackadaisical Christians 
instead of us being more vigilant, the Apostle Paul said it's time for us to wake up out of sleep and to be vigilant because our salvation is now closer than it was when we first believed. It's time for us to wake up out of slumber. If we have a doctrine that puts us into slumber, it is not the kingdom of God. Now, you know, Jesus can come back anytime he wants to, and I'm not going to argue with him. When he, when he says, yo, I'm going to go. But you have to look at the fruit of what doctrines do. And, and those that are, are mid-trib or, or even post-trib, they're preparing, they're strengthening themselves, spirit, soul, and body, because we may have to go through some things. We don't know exactly when the Lord's going to return. And there, I think there's like what, nine different positions historically in the body of Christ through it. And God's going to come back when it's time for Jesus to come back is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Our job is not to fight over the timing. It is to be ready and to be strong. He says, when I come back, am I going to find faith in the earth? Well, my attitude needs to be, if there's only one person that you're going to find faithful, it's going to be me. Mm -hmm. I have determined he is going to find faith in the earth when he comes back. Regardless of what I see with my eyes, I know the truth. I know the enemy is going to come with lying signs and wonders. Before he can even do that, he's got to put the church asleep. And I choose to be awake. And I choose to be proclaiming truth and hoping and trusting because nothing, tribulation, the Apostle Paul said, cannot separate me from the love yeah, of God. That's right. Persecution cannot separate me from the love of God. Yeah, and Mary, when he was writing a lot of these, I was, I was reading through, I began reading through the, uh, the Christian Complete Armor. One of the things he brings out, you know, Paul was a Roman citizen. He had, he had great standing. He finds himself in prison, chained to a wall for preaching the gospel on his way to Rome. Instead of spending his time as a Roman citizen would do, finding attorneys and making legal petitions to get himself out of prison, he starts writing epistles that have blessed and strengthened billions of Christians over the years in the midst of prison. While we were sitting there and we were thinking, oh, woe is me. I, I, oh, I, I just, you know, I can't believe that God isn't hearing my prayers and all this stuff. He's writing life altering epistles that are strengthening the church and has been strengthening the church ever yeah, since. That's right. Now, that's a man of faith. And I, I think he knew where he was going. I mean, he was already warned by, by a prophet. Listen, if you go to, if you go to up to Jerusalem, they're going to bind you up. They're going to take you captive. He knew what he was getting into before he went. But you know what? Out of all of that, God penned most of the New Testament while he was in prison. He was writing epistles. Can we say that of us? Are we that strong that we can be in the midst of that type of persecution and God begins using us to bless other people and to strengthen other people? We see we need we need to take a hard look in the mirror. That's I think that's why God has given this message to you today. God's moving in ways that we can't understand. We don't understand the strength of the kingdom that is supposed to be in us. We, we have been weakened by the affluence that we have had in America. Without all, these, all these times of prosperity has, in a great sense, weakened us. And the enemy has convinced us that we have no strength, we have not this. You know, it, you know, it's, it's like in a church service. Can you, can you imagine the Apostle Paul in his day saying, we just got to get the mood just right, we got to get the lights just right, we got to get this just right before God can move. What a bunch of hooey. They were, they were meeting in secret because they know that they were being hunted. And God was moving. And souls were being saved. Lives were being transformed. People were being healed under that type of persecution. And we got to worry about the lighting and if we got the temperature just, just right in the sanctuary and all this other stuff. We got to... When, 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 you go through some things. It's like you and I have gone through some things, and God has brought us through some things that really have just amazed me. Oh, me too. But it, it's almost like when you, you when you're a, when you're in the military and you've been into battle and you come back and you see all the stupid stuff that people are arguing about. It is so infinitesimal to you. Okay, it's it's, it's so it's like I can't believe that you are so childlike that you're arguing about these such little things when I'm just grateful not to be in the middle of combat anymore and not have to watch my six every minute because the enemy is planning IEDs or, or snipers or whatever. 
And I, I think that God is allowing us to go through some things to toughen us up so that we can have a warrior's attitude so that we quit bickering about little things that mean absolutely nothing so that we can start concentrating our energies on the things that matter in the kingdom of God. The ecclesia is beginning to come together, beginning to hear what God is saying. We're beginning to speak in harmony with heaven. And when we as a people begin to speak in harmony with heaven, we're speaking because God is speaking. Not, we're not things out of our desire, out of our Laodicean laid back uh, God's going to pamper me and just give me a big fluffy pillow, but he's, he's speaking some things to change some things in the earth, mm -hmm. to judge evil, because God is saying, I have had enough. When his church comes in alignment with that, heaven and earth are going to shake. You know, that, that's, that, was, that was the earmark of Jesus. Jesus said, I'd say nothing unless I hear my father saying it. I do nothing unless I hear him doing it. And now we're seeing the, the ecclesia is beginning to come into line with that because they have realized that no tribulation, no persecution, no matter what the enemy has done, nothing is going to separate us from God and that we can walk right through the middle of judgment and come out on the other side perfectly whole because yeah. we're walking with God. We're walking in the kingdom. And in the midst of that, we can declare his judgment on the evil around us oh you preach it darling that's exactly right and that's that's what i think we're we're seeing is god's raising up his people he's 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 um you know holding back a lot of the things he's letting a little bit go at once because you know you can get overwhelmed and he's letting everybody see a little bit as we go which is very handy i was thankful that god did that in increments for me years ago because it, it's overwhelming when you see the evil that's been done but at the same time that he was showing me this he said mary there's coming a day when there's going to be a group of people out there and there are going to be people that have been affected by mind control he said in one hour their minds are going to be Restore. like they were yes like i created their minds see mm -hmm. he can do anything if he can grow out limbs if he if he can put eyes back in people you think he can't re rewire your brain back god, the way that it was god is the only one who can unscramble an egg you know he can Absolutely. he can heal the brokenhearted yes he can do these things and that's that's why i have been so frustrated through the years is is hearing people talk about and and witnessing it that counseling and counseling and counseling and you just go right back around to the same old circle and the only thing i've seen stop that is prof a prophetic word that is like laser and it goes right to where Satan did something and God undoes it. But there's there's a power getting ready to be released for restoration. And I'm yep. I'm talking restoration of things people think there ain't no way. Yep. Ain't no way can that be restored. You think he can't uh, sober up a, a person that's an alcoholic? You think he can't bring to sobriety somebody that's, you know, doesn't know telling what on drugs? Well, you, you can say, okay, now we know we've been trying this forever. There and and when you when you study the book of Habakkuk, God's people were okay. They're they're coming out of Babylon, they're coming back to Jerusalem, and they were trying to rebuild the temple. All hell broke loose. I mean, everything. Uh, there was a whisper campaign in the in the ears of the king. They had all the nations around them did absolutely everything from terrorism on to stop them from doing this. Twenty one years they tried. They they'd given up. When Habakkuk came, it was a prophet with a fresh prophetic anointing. Mm -hmm. What they couldn't do in 21 years, they did in five. Yeah, and because, I because of the, the, the prophetic refreshing. When, when, when God begins to move prophetically, there is a reset. You know, they're, always, they're talking about the great reset. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is getting ready to do a great reset on his people. That's right. That he's going to bring them back to the design that he had for them, the strength mm -hmm. that he had for them, the perception that he had for them. And he's going to begin to restore that which the enemy has done. The enemy has, th has thought that he has crippled the body to where we are non-functional. And can never be restored. And can never be restored. And so it's like, okay, come back for this Jesus. Come back for this hobbled bride that you're supposed to have. Come back for this that, that won't even get in agreement with you, that fight among themselves and, and, and just use every excuse to where they don't have to have strength. Go ahead and come back for this, that they're sinning, they're, they're, they're into neo-paganism and don't even know if they're letting the New Age flood it, they're letting communism flood their theology. Go ahead and come back for this. And God says, yeah, go ahead and do that. 
I'm getting ready to reset my remnant. Mm -hmm. And my remnant's going to set the standard. They're going to be the special forces that go out. Yeah. And I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that church without spot and a wrinkle because I have declared it, and I'm Almighty God. And there's nothing that you can do that I can't outdo in one hour. That's right. Remember that sci-fi movie we watched years ago, and, the, and they had a gun, and the bullets uh, would. I don't know if they were uh, tied to their DNA or something, but they could. They would find the person even if they're running around they buildings would, they would and stuff. Their that heat signature. That that bullet would do. That's what God's getting ready to release. Yeah. There won't be any place to hide for the enemy. There won't be any place that you can run. There's going to be a heat-seeking missile. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that Satan thought, this is God can never use mm -hmm. you. That we're going to have John the Baptist raised up. We're going to have those under the unction <laughs> of the spirit of Elijah begin to raise up from nobodies. That, we're on, that Satan says, I'm not even going to have to mess with you anymore because I got you so stuck on stupid that, you, that you're that you never going to do anything. I've got you so messed up that there's no undoing this. I've mm -hmm. got you so messed up. But yet in the midnight hour, God is going to visit them and he's yeah. going to transform them. That's all right. And they're going to become Satan's worst nightmare because they said, I know your tactics. I know what you do and I'm going to see it undone because I not only, you see, when you get set free from something, the enemy has done to you. You hate it with a passion. Boy, that's the truth. That is the truth. And, and you know, I think what is getting ready to happen is whatever the anointing is needed for us to truly have the mind of Christ. Because, you know, if you have the mind of Christ, you're going to flow exactly with the kingdom of God, exactly with mm -hmm. what God's wanting done. So wouldn't Satan attack that more than anything else to yeah. get you away from having the mind of Christ? And, oh, he's done... A superb job. He, he's done that with a lot of man-made doctrines that we're going to have to pitch aside. Yeah. It's going, to, it's going to simply be the way, you know, if we all had the mind of Christ, we would all be saying the same thing. Well, and ev even on, like, the Sabbath, we haven't got it right yet. No. There, there's got to be a way that you can do the Sabbath that is a delight to God. You're, we're honoring him, but you don't drive the people crazy. Yes. You know, you can't take a working mom that's so tired at the end of the week, and she's got to get a whole bunch of food fixed so she never can't even turn her stove on. Um, you can't put kids in a, in a bottle to where you got to sit still and not move for 24 hours. You can't put people to where they can't do anything on Saturday, and then they, they're, um, they've they got things on Sunday that, that they have to do. You're, there's, there's things we're going to have to get worked out here through prayer on how to do it right to where we don't put – unnecessary burdens on people and turn kids against the sabbath yeah it should be a delight it shouldn't should be, be something that kids are saying i dread no. this i can't even play with my friends i can't move i've just i mean you know there's there's a way to do this that we're going to have to seek god on that is is permissible you know but not well you, you, can, you kind of look at israel how they do things and they have a do they have a two-day weekend too it's friday and saturday because they take off friday so they can do all the preparation for sabbath but the, but we don't live in yeah, a Sabbath keeping country, so, I mean, and so it's so we have we have to kind of rethink what we're doing and 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 try to do it to where it's not a burden on everybody. Well, one one of the things that we do, and there are probably a lot of people disagree with us on it, but um, when we were having the you know the groups of people come in and trying to see how in the world to to do this, and it's not to where you just can't even get it done, is we would say like after that that supper meal. Then you count the twenty-four hours to the next like on six Saturday. To six yeah, let's say to six five. to six, something like that. Then that gives you Saturday night to go ahead, and if you've got to run to the grocery store or get some laundry done or whatever, um, that's a twenty-four hour period. Mm -hmm. And as we're, you know, we're not lined up with the time that Israel keeps anyway. So a twenty-four hour period that you're devoting to God. I don't think there's a thing wrong with kids playing. There's some people say that your kids can't play. They can't no. do it. it I'm telling you. It's not you, work. It, and it's it's not going to work with kids. You can't put kids in that kind of a situation. No. Um, we, we know, and we've, so we've there's a lot. People, you know, spend some time playing ball with your kids or something. Rebond with your family. You know, that's not work. No. And so so there's a lot of people that wouldn't agree with what I'm saying. But I've watched this. And from a practical side, we're going to have to pray and get some yeah. answers on what's what's permissive, permissive during that time, and what is still honoring to God.
And you you can let a religious spirit get in there and just Ooh, absolutely drive you crazy. I've heard so many religious spirits here lately. Ooh, man, that really gets me. When I <laughs> but guys, you know, God God is doing a thing, and our thing is God. Number one, draw me closer to you. Yes, draw me closer to you. We we need to be like the guy that had the the demonic child that Jesus came to and said, "Do you believe?" And he said, "Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief." Let's just get real with God and say, God, this this is where I am. I know where I need to be. This is where I am. Help me get to where I need to be. And, well, and, you know, how do we get back? Like, let's say somebody's sitting there and saying, well, I've not trusted God. I've not been able to put my trust in him. I'm not I'm not where I need to be. First thing we've got to do is ask forgiveness for Absolutely. the mistakes we've made. I do that every day, every day, because I make them every day. <laughs> <laughs> and so I always just get up and I say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. I have to do that every day. It's like, it's like, good morning, Lord. I'm a mess. Please help me. Forgive me where I messed up and help me do better today. I never doubt this. And you guys work on not ever doubting this either. I know my daddy in heaven loves me. Yes. He has proven that to me over and over. And in all my, you know, my bad attitudes and things that I'm I'm fighting still to this day to, to get everything right, he loves me, and he loves you. So don't don't doubt that. Don't let Satan put doubt in your mind, and re- realize that his mercies are new every morning. Yeah. Let's say you have screwed up royally this week, but the, but you got a new morning, and his mercy's there to meet you, and and to say let's start again. Let's let's start anew. You can you're going to do better. That's his attitude towards you. You know the the thing is, you know, even when kids are learning how to walk, you don't scold them when they fall down. No. Because they're in a learning process. Mm -hmm. You're in a learning process. All your life, you did whatever sin wanted you to do. You did whatever the devil wanted you to do. And and you were an expert at it. Okay. You know, some of us, we we tried to make it into an Olympic event. Okay. We we were that good. We were Olympians in doing sin. And now you're trying to learn how to walk with God. It's going to take you a while. Yeah, and you just, you just make that determination, and he'll show you. Psalm 25, 4 and 5 says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Mm-hmm. See, it's, it's, it's a lot about just listening. A lot about, correct me, God. You know, you know let me feel conviction if I'm, if I'm doing something wrong. Show me. And then, then we've just got to, to press in and, and start reading the Word. Mm-hmm. Start you know, finding people that, that your spirit um, gives you a witness, this is truth. And no. that's a lot of places. There's a lot of yeah. places. I've got my favorite preachers and my favorite books that that I go to that strengthen me. And, uh, you know, I got some of them downloaded on my phone so that I can I can listen to if I'm, if I'm busy doing other things. And all of us have that time that we're doing just busy work that's hands are busy, mind is not that you can put on a good teaching, good preaching, audio books, something. Uh, I've, I've got the, the New King James Bible on audio on my phone. And so sometimes when I'm doing stuff around the office, I'll, I'll put that on and, and just listen because uh, it, I think that's part of the redeeming of the time because the enemy wants to keep you so busy sometimes that you can't. And so we can get creative. And what I have learned, you know, sometimes in listening, like listening to the Bible, I've caught things that I've not caught while reading the Bible. Yeah, that's easy to do. You can you can catch a lot by listening. And so we, we need to get creative on these things. And the enemy always wants to put us in entertainment mode where we need to be in strengthening mode. And I, I think that's the, and there's, there's time for entertainment. There's time for, you know, kicking back and relaxing. But there's also time that we've got to strengthen ourselves and be ready for the days that are ahead. And I think this is a time of strengthening. Yeah, while we can. You know, yes. while we we have it pretty easy still. I mean, a lot of people may have. I I think compared to what sho- God showed me could happen in these days, without His people raising up and praying, um, this these are good times. Yeah. Let's let's take advantage of the good times. Ask God what we need to do to prepare, and I am just I'm full of hope of what God's getting ready to do and restore lives. Absolutely. Well, Father, give us strength. Father, the word says that we're to say to your people, be strengthened, be strengthened, be strong. And Father, we speak that over your people. Father, we bind up weakness the enemy is trying to speak over us. And we cast it to the side and we say we are strong in the Lord and the power of his might, that we can do anything that God has called us to do. And Father, we know that where our limitations are, 
at the very end of that is the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and the power of God to take us on to fulfill that which you have called us to do. Father, we long to see your power. We long to see your glory. And Father, it's never about us. It, it's always about Jesus and his will and his purposes in the earth, Father. Let us get to the place to where we worry about making Jesus famous, making his name a name of honor and a name to be respected, and no longer worry about people remembering who we are, but only that Jesus had been there. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Be informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.